Hey everybody, Brian here, and in today's video, we're going to be working with the 2022 Toyota Highlander XLE Hybrid All-Wheel Drive. Let's check it out. Alright, so here she is. 2022, brand new from the factory. And if you're hip with the times, it's tough to get cars. And it's even more tough to get your hands on something like this because it's a hybrid all-wheel drive. And as you know with the Highlander, there does exist the front wheel drive option. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start with the exterior of the vehicle. I'll talk about the way it drives. You can look up the specs online. I don't like to make videos all about the numbers. The numbers are very easy to get. It's not easy to get somebody's idea and view on the vehicle and experience with it. Especially somebody like me who has worked with Toyota models for the last five and a half years. So we'll start from the outside. We'll talk about the engine and powertrain. We'll work our way inside and we'll even go over some buttons and I'll let you know what I think. All right, so let's start with the appearance of the 2022 Highlander Hybrid XLE. So from the front, you'll notice compared to the previous generation, which was 2019 and older, things have gotten a lot more smooth. The first thing I noticed with this generation is the headlights. You don't have those oversized headlights that are working a little too hard to look mean. You have a little bit more class. And you'll see here, there's a lot more curvature in the design. We have these two U's here that come together with a dark black plastic on the inside there. And they put a lot more emphasis in making the curvature of the body lines come together as a whole. But if you look at the hood, it still has the muscle that you see on a lot of these Toyotas, which is bringing back that off-road heritage. The previous generation of Highlander, the front end was pretty much the entire grille. So this part here came down all the way to the bottom and you had these straight lines that went all the way up that made it look like it had a huge mouth. And in a world where all the manufacturers seem like they're trying to make the whole front end grille without shouting anybody out, you just have that regular SUV look. I have an appreciation for this. You know, they're trying to stay true to what people have said. The nice thing about Toyota is it listens to its consumers. You know, it doesn't do everything they say, but it does listen to what they say. And, you know, when you look at, I'm gonna say it, when you look at Lexus with these giant hourglasses here, and you look at the new uh, BMW, which just looks like it's all nose, they're giving you that classic timeless look that I think you're not gonna be able to beat. Onto the fog light. We're now seeing a smaller fog light do the same work, if not better work, than those very big round ones that you saw on like a 2013 RAV4 do. So things are becoming a little bit more classy here with the Highlander. Moving on to the side profile. Nice curved lines on the windows. You see the waist comes up, no sharp jagged edges. It looks very aerodynamic without having extra sharp lines. I like that the profile of the headlight just kind of comes back to the side and gets thinner as you go. And the taillight as well, it just gets thin. It's a simple design and it's something that I see a couple other manufacturers trying to adopt. I'm not going to mention the manufacturer that I think is copying this design, but I'd love to hear in the comments what you think. Onto the taillights, same concept. So you have that uniformity there where everything is just smooth. You don't have those two straight lines with the bubbled look on the side. Nice big reflectors in the back. It almost looks a little devilish here with the wing on the top. That bill up there, it almost looks like horns. And with the black paint, it's very spooky. Looks very nice for the uh, Halloween season. And I did a video on one that had the red leather interior. And that one just looked amazing, if you're into that stuff. And onto the wheels, simple alloy wheel. Not my favorite design as I'm a truck guy. I like those those thick, you know, off-road looking wheels that you get from the factory with the trucks. But to each their own. I think it's a good wheel. You still have a machine finish with a it looks like magnetic gray metallic paint on the inside there. Nice five spokes. Keeping it simple. I also appreciate that they're doing the non-painted surface here. So it can take the beating with the gravel you might kick up or the branches when you're going camping or on the trails. Say you're going to an off-road area where you got to go fishing. It's kind of bringing back that off-road heritage. And you have that in the front here on the lip. That's going to be non-painted all the way through the entire perimeter. Not under here. This is going to be painted. But it comes back here and then underneath. 
that's gonna take the beating very well. All right, let's pop the hood, get underneath, and I'll talk to you about the way it drives. So the hybrid is now a four cylinder. So here it is, a 2.5 liter four cylinder. This might look complicated to people that are not very mechanically inclined, but you still have a simple Toyota design. I got my air box over here. It's very easy to get behind the headlights and have access to the bulbs. My brake reservoir is there. Of course, my brake booster and my master cylinder are kind of tucked in there in the back, but generally it's, it's simple. Lots of space for heat management and ease of work. A lot of these main hoses are very easy to get to. They're not tucked away, which is nice for the high mileage. And if you think about it, in the big cities in the United States, most of the cars that these taxi companies and livery companies invest in are going to be hybrid Toyotas because they want something to maximize profit that has low cost and low cost of ownership is key. So they build them that way and people appreciate it. Cooling system right there. You got your fans and your radiator over here and that's just a dust cover with your coil packs up top and the fuel rail. The oil pin here, or whatever you call that, you know, to check your oil level is right there. Dipstick, there you go dipsticks right there easy to check your oil here's part of your hybrid system it looks like there's a lot going on but believe it or not this is actually simple and here's your engine code right here it's the a25a fxs i'm not a technician but i know a couple things about these cars and i know that toyota does keep it simple so for gas mileage you're going to be getting 35 35 35 that means 35 on the highway, 35 in the city with a blend of 35 and with it being an all wheel drive model, which is great. Now let's talk about the power. So how does it drive? Well, being a person that was a little bit resistant to hybrids when I started with the company and now understands what they're doing, I'll say it, they do great. You're not gonna get that straight power of the six cylinder but when you're not at the gas pump as often and the amount you have to fill up doesn't feel as painful, you're gonna appreciate it. And the nice thing about the hybrids is that the electric motors that power the front and back axles are actually more efficient at getting you up to speed, which means acceleration. So when you go to this little lever over here and you bump it up to sport mode, that's when the two electric motors powering the front and back are really gonna boost your power. And you're gonna forget all about that gas guzzling V6. And you know, it's not really that much of a gas guzzler, but compared to this, this is a lot better fuel economy. The center of gravity compared to the last generation is better. It is a TGNA platform. So Toyota new global architecture. Basically that means it's a frame that's designed to have a better center of gravity, better responsiveness in emergencies, better enjoyment and better crashing, God forbid. So I'm gonna give it an A plus. It's easy for me to forget about that straight line V6 power when I put it in sport mode and you feel the juice come from the electric motors. And fun fact about Toyota hybrids, when you get a hybrid all wheel drive, you actually have no mechanical connection between the front and back axles here like you would on a gas model. So there's no drive shaft. You have an electric motor that powers these back to. You have an electric motor attached to the transmission that powers those. And then it's just electronic wires that tell the car when to kick in the back wheels. So during hard acceleration or any type of wheel slip, those back wheels know when to kick in. So it's gonna primarily be the front wheel drive, which is gonna boost your fuel economy and reduce you know, wear and tear to moving parts. But when it needs it, you're not losing horsepower and you're actually losing some weight because you don't have all those heavy metal parts here. So that's what's actually gonna make up for the lack of power that the four cylinder would be. So yes, it rides nice and I suggest getting your hands on one at a local dealership and test driving it and letting me know what you think because you think a four cylinder would be slow. It's not a racing SUV, but it's got the power that you need, especially when you have people in it. All right, let's get inside, talk about some of the interior features and then we'll go over buttons. So from the back. They made the hatchback out of a lightweight material so that it opens one second faster. I know one second, what's that? But I notice it and it's nice and it also closes one second faster. So when you set the height adjustment to number four instead of five, it actually feels like it's closing pretty quick. And yes, Highlander hatches are adjustable when they're electronic. You can do it on the screen that they call the MID, which is that little screen in between your speedometer and your tachometer. So there it is, 
I have the button here I can close it by hand. Of course, if I can't reach and I didn't set the uh, height adjustment, I can do it from the fob, and I can even do it from the dashboard inside by the steering wheel. But here's what it looks like. The shelf is just above my knee. I'd say it's still pretty low. It's not as low as the RAV4, but you have the height up here, decent width. The seat belts do clip into the wall here so that they're not snagging onto your belongings or clacking against the plastic and making noise. You have the inserts for your tonneau cover if it comes with one. And the third row is folded down. Now, when the third row is up, which I'll show you. Oh, let me move these seats forward and I'll show you how this row folds up. There we go, we got a little bit of space. Just pull on this rope. It's in the most upright position. Your headrest comes up and I can recline it all the way back to here, which is awesome. I get a little bit of claustrophobic when I'm in the back of a third row, but you have the ventilation in all three rows and you have reading lights in all three rows. And you have cup holders in all three rows. So when you set this third row back like that and you're laying back, it's not as easy to get claustrophobic, especially with some AC on your chest. So look at that. There's the difference from the upright position to the fully reclined position. And then to fold them down, it's very easy. You hold this up like this. The headrest eventually comes down and you can drop it right down. Just like that. Now, if you're a Highlander person, you may be upset at the news I'm about to share. On XLEs and up on the last generation, you'd have a little button right here. And if you pushed it, there would be a tab right here that you lifted and the glass would open up, which I would call the quick pop glass. And people loved it because it was quick access to the back. That's gone. I haven't, as an, I haven't had an answer as to why they removed it. I would just guess that with the way they designed the hatchback, they didn't find it necessary. Maybe not enough people spoke about it. But the cool thing about Toyota is if enough people speak about it and contact them, I could see them putting it back. They do stuff like that. Rumor has it that with the new generation of Supra, so many people were upset about it being a BMW that Toyota actually started making OEM original parts again and manufacturing them for the fourth generation Supra. But that's another talk. This is not a Supra. Another feature for the XLEs and up, which was just like the last generation, is your sunshades, which come up like this. No electronic module to break, just clips into these two clips here. And it's a tough material. You can ride with the window down and this will just move a little bit in the wind, it won't make noise. And you can tell this is not a brittle plastic. You can slam these down on accident and they'll take hundreds and hundreds of accidental slams. Not that I recommend doing it that way out of negligence, but they're nice. It reduces the sun without you having to go and get darker tint. Decent storage in the doors, a little bit less than my Toyota Tacoma. With the seats forward a little bit, here's what we look like and they're slightly reclined. I have my recliner here and then I have this button here which will fold the seat flat. Now they gave you a little number one and a number two to let you know the order and uh, you know the order of operations for folding that seat flush. So I'll try to do it one-handed. And then I just pull this guy down. There you go. Not too bad. And then you can turn this thing into a little pickup truck. You can put some wood, pallet, or tarp. You can put your two by fours. You can do some home improvements. And it just makes things a lot easier. With the aisle though, you have space here, which I'll show you in just a moment. Getting inside, I have a separate control for the climate control. So you have two different temperatures up front. And then I have one in the back I can control on my own, and this is going to light up in a nice blue LCD display. And I can control the fan speed, turn it off, change the air direction, put on auto like my house, and change the temperature. With two USB-Cs back here. And for my people who've commented on my remarks about the USB-C, I understand now it charges faster and it's the industry standard. 
I thought it was just Apple's way of trying to push their stuff and everything, but I was wrong. I admit when I'm wrong, guys. Nice one-piece Toyota floor mat. The nice thing about Toyota's all-weather floor mats, they're the same, and they're standard all down the board. You get the same no matter what model you get. And these channels here have dividers, so that when you get water or soda or a milkshake here, it's not going to slide like this. It's going to stop in the cells that it's in, which prevents it from going all over the place. So Toyota's really trying to keep you from making some purchases with other brands that compete against their equipment. Buy the Toyota stuff, it fits perfectly. I'm not against modifying or upgrading, but these are what I'm saying is these are really nice right out of the box. I also have an auto up and down window on each side. And on the driver's side switch, I have auto up and down windows all around. So it's just one touch down, one pull up for all four. So here's what it looks like as a passenger right behind the driver. I'm not claustrophobic. I can see all through here. I can even see through the mirror area. Nice big windows that open all the way. Looking to my right, I have a nice, it's like ski goggles. I can see everywhere. Even with this, I feel like there's a lot of space to see. And it's great. A lot of sunlight. Even with the privacy tint, it's not overly dark to make me feel like I'm in a coffin. The only thing I would have changed that I don't understand that they did is this vent is pointing literally down on the top of my head. On the last generation, that vent was actually long ways like this to mimic that. And you'd be able to aim it down towards your chest and neck or your chest and lap. With this, it's either just top of the head, forehead and lips, or lap. Kind of weird. I know it has to do with the TNG platform. You know, things have to go in certain places, but I don't know. Not enough to, you know, tell you to not get one, but I'm sure there's a way you can adjust it that works. And how picky is a 10-year-old kid going to be, you know, or a 16-year-old going to practice? But for me, I notice stuff like that, and it's kind of weird for me. But I'm a finicky kind of guy. Easy to use lights. Simple stuff. No fancy little button. They also made... The armrest out of a firm material here so even though it's small it feels very stable and you can have i don't have giant arms but i'd imagine you could have a big heavy arm and it will be just fine right here and also the seat belts there's nowhere to get lost they have this little protective shell here and housing where you can the whole idea is with one hand to grab the seat belt and easily buckle it up see to just the easier they make it the more likely you are to do it right and of course the seat belt, it just feels like it's very strong. I felt a lot of seat belts working with cars, you know, for the last five and a half years and owning a lot of cars. This seat belt feels very nice. And do your research about how Toyota did their testing on seat belts and how they wouldn't stop testing until they passed every single time. On the inside you have a blend between very dark gray and a light gray, which goes very nice with this light interior, which they call graphite as opposed to ash. The graphite is a dot, just a dot I'd say. I'd say a dot darker. Only the artists are going to notice that. Whole new shape of the seat, all anti-whiplash headrests, and you get the anti-whiplash technology in the back as well. Airbags in all three rows. Safety, you're going to be five, five stars and four stars down the board. And look up your IIHS videos to really see how these perform. But I saved the best for last. Let's get into the cockpit and start going over some buttons. Let's get inside this 2022 Toyota Highlander XLE Hybrid. I think it's beautiful. Nice introduction. Shiny Toyota symbol with the Highlander spinning. Fun fact about hybrids, you're not necessarily going to hear the engine when you turn it on. You're going to see the little ready badge. And the engine just kicked on. With the smart key, I just keep this in my pocket and I can press the brake and the push start button and it starts right up. And speaking of the smart key, let me shut it down. And I'll show you a couple fun facts about the smart key. So say the key is in the car and it fell out of my pocket and it's down here somewhere. And I think it's in my pocket. And I go to lock it. It's going to make that beeping sound. And it says... 
Key detected in vehicle. So it refuses to lock. Now ready for this? Say the key is in here and I don't realize and I go to lock my key inside. See how it's locked? And I close the door. Oh no. It just unlocked the doors and it's letting me know the same thing on the MID screen. So it just unlocked itself for me. That's the benefit of the smart key. Now, when it's in my pocket or on me, what I can do is close the door and put my thumb on these two lines. Locked. And I can even tell because the blinker and the mirror blinked. To unlock it, there you go. And fun fact, with the smart key, it's only gonna unlock the driver door. As a security setting, it keeps the other doors locked. Just in case you have some weirdo following you, you never know. I hate to talk about those things, but you do, you never know. If I unlock it from the passenger side, it'll do all four doors. So if you're with a group of people, just touch your door handle on the passenger side and they can get their stuff done with and get situated while you jump in and you're ready to roll. Now, you'll have to check out my key fob videos because there's a couple other things, but say the battery dies and it's no longer working, you can still start the car. There's a little lever here, and if you push that down, you can slide out the key. Put that in there, you turn it, open the door, and what you do is take your fob with the dead battery and hold it against this while you start it up. So there's a little smart key action for you. Now let's go to the buttons. All right, so like I mentioned, when you're in a Toyota Hybrid, you press the brake, you push the push start once, you'll see the gauges light up and the needle starts hovering on the left. There it is. And you'll see the ready symbol. The ready symbol is what gives it away, as well as the drive needle hovering from the off position up. And I just heard that the engine started. And just to give you a little diagram, there it is. So here's your two electric motors. They power the front and back axles individually and the diagram tells me that the engine is powering MG1, which is sending energy to the battery. And when I need power to the wheels, MG1 will power these and MG2, that's their nicknames, will power these. So these arrows will show you basically a monitor of what direction the, en what direction the energy is going in and where it's coming from and where it's going to. But from left to right, let's do a quick button overview. I have my auto down and up windows all around. I have my window lock with an LED display and my lock and unlock buttons. Two little knobs that'll tell me it's locked. For the mirror, this is the neutral position. Left mirror adjust, neutral, right mirror adjust. Neutral again, so if I bump it, it doesn't change anything. Over here, I have the button for my automatic high beams. So if my lights are on auto, and I push the stock forward like this, I'll have auto high beams when that's on. Then I press and hold that for the hatch, you'll hear a beep, and then I press and hold and hear a beep to close, but you can let go once it beeps. Underneath there I have some storage, then I have the lever for the hood, and a light up button for the gas cap, which is gonna be on the driver's side, and in case you ever forget, there's a little symbol there with an arrow that reminds me what side my gas cap is on. Then of course underneath, I just have my brake and my gas pedal with a footrest. No more buttons down here or anything. They moved them up here for you. Onto the side behind the stock for the headlights, I have odometer and trip and the brightness to the gauges. So odometer and trip is gonna go through the odometer and the trip. Press and hold the clear, press and hold the clear. And then for these, it's a little symbol of a speedometer with a light bulb. The down arrow will dim it. Let me just hit the back button here. There we go. See, now it'll dim the gauge display. Most people like it one below the top because the top is super bright. 
Onto the headlights, I have day terminal lights off, automatic, which it'll sense when it's nighttime and kick all the lights on. Parking lights, so I can see inside lights, but not blind people. And the regular old school way. When I'm here or here, I can do fog lights. So fog lights on, fog lights off. I also have my turn signals or a quick tap, which will give me three signals. Great for merging on the highway. And then I also have the lever here that I pull down and I can telescope the steering wheel and raise it up and down and then lock it back into place. On the other side of the steering wheel, I have the stock for the wipers. So I have intermittent, low, and high. So if I click down once, I can change how often it goes. If I click down again, it's low once in a while, or low back and forth, and then high, continuous. The once in a while is intermittent, and I can just change how often. This is for the back. So you'll see these symbols up here. That's the back windshield, that's the front windshield. So for the back windshield, I have off for the wiper, intermittent, which is once in a while, which is not affected by this, and then I have on, which is twisted by here. If I pull this towards me, this arrow represents by pulling it this way towards me, it'll spray the front windshield. If I push this away from me, it'll do the back windshield, which is the square. Onto the steering wheel buttons, I have the arrows that operate the MID, the select and back button, and MID means multi-information display, which is the screen in the center. So I can go through the different menus. And if you look here, I have all my different menus, so I'll go up and down for you. See? So I'll start from the top. Leaf is going to be information about economy or just your general drive. Now if you see those little three dots, that means I can use the left and right arrows to go back and forth and see all kinds of stuff about my gas mileage, my driver score, my eco score. Most people like to do the digital speed. Then I have my safety sense system, which is like a driving support, which gives me what the car is sensing and a digital speed on the side. That'll tell me what song is playing. There's some more information about the vehicle. So at a glance, I can actually see what this diagram is without having to find it in there. That shows me an abbreviated version. Also gives me my PSI per tire. The all-wheel drive control, so there will be little bars that light up to show you what all four wheels are doing, if you're interested. And that'll show me if all of my safety systems are on and that they're ready for sensing and the status. When I go down, here's my settings, which are a little bit more advanced. I can change settings to the lane departure alert. If I press and hold the OK button, I can even do stuff like the lane center on and off, sensitivity, sway warning, it'll sense when I'm sleepy, and the sensitivity for that. The back button is right here to go back. I can even change some pre-collision settings. Press and hold the OK button. And here's settings for the cruise control. Blind spot monitor I can turn on and off. And rear cross traffic alert, which basically beeps when it senses cars driving around behind you when you're in reverse. This is my road sign assist for reading road signs. And if I press and hold this one, this is where I can change the height adjustment to the hatchback five different levels. Stock is five. Hit the back button on the steering wheel. I can change the volume. There's a lot of stuff, so I'm going to try to keep the video concise. Now the warning, the warning menu. That's going to light up orange when it's letting you know there's something that needs attention, and right now it's telling me that we're on, but the driver is not wearing the seatbelt, which is me. So if I put the seatbelt on, see how it went away? This little EV badge here, that's a little friend that pops up when the engine is off, letting you know that you're technically an electric vehicle. That's what it stands for. But he goes away when the engine is on. That's the lane departure alert, which I can turn on and off right here in the steering wheel. And then this just lets me know that my system is on and ready. On the bottom, I have the outside temp. What gear I'm in. So notice, if I put in reverse, I can tell because the R is lit up. I can tell I'm in drive right here. If I shift it over one, I can toggle through the gears like this. See on the bottom there? So that's how I can control my RPMs. So a scenario, I'm going up a steep hill in the snow. I put in second gear and I can keep those RPMs where I need them. Back into drive, back into park. When you put in park, you're gonna hear a little sound. That's the electronic parking brake applying itself. So notice, it disengages when I put it into drive and it re-engages when I put it into park. 
just takes a couple seconds and when that's on you know because it'll say park right here and you might say where are the rpms though well they're giving you this rig gauge for the rpms and this represents what the hybrid system is doing so when it dips down it's in charging through here is eco driving which is going to be lower rpms and then up here is going to be higher rpms on the top then i have my engine temperature over here which is still warming up and then on the right side i have my fuel with the little arrow like i told you and an analog view of the speed very simple reader easy to read and i like that because you can see things very easily at a glance it doesn't look too complicated kind of like my watch i can just look at the time and i'm done look at my speed and information then i'm done looking at important stuff so it's all about safety but to finish up the buttons here so that's your arrows select and back button for the mid when i'm connected to bluetooth i can answer and hang up calls here i can change the volume to the songs with the volume buttons or even the volume to the call and i can place voice commands and fun fact you can teach the car how to learn your voice kind of learns your accent it's like a voice recognition artificial intelligence on to the right side we have that lane departure alert i mentioned which also has lane trace assist when your cruise control is on which means it'll stay in the center of its lane it will also try to steer you back in your lane which you can turn that feature off on it in those settings i mentioned when you're in the automatic cruise control you can change the following distance here so it's like a sensitivity button close medium and far to set that you hit the little symbol of the speedometer with the car and it'll say radar ready or radar cruise active and then you would just hit set and you'll see the speed that it's set to up here and then i can increase and decrease speed i can cancel the cruise control by either turning the radar off hitting cancel or hitting the brake now if i press and hold this button the car is going to go away and the arrow is going to move to the left watch see that that symbol there represents non-radar cruise control so that's going to be the one that doesn't sense cars and slow down that's your regular normal cruise control for people that are a little weirded out or don't like the way that works mode is going to shuffle through am fm bluetooth etc and this will go through the songs i'm getting a little toasty So there are all the buttons on the steering wheel. We went over the gauge cluster here with the MID. We went over the buttons on the sides. We did the door. We did these buttons, both stocks. Now we're gonna take a little bit of a breather and we're gonna work our way down to storage and go up here and we're gonna finish off with the screen. All right, so on to storage. Yes, the storage did get a little bit smaller. No, you're not gonna worry about that for a long time because with the way this car drives you're going to forget all about that huge storage you had in the 2019 that you never really actually did use all of i know there are exceptions when i pull this it opens up i have wireless charging which is on i can turn it off like that if you have an older phone or a really thick case it might not work on here so you just got to test it this lifts up without any type of switch it just comes up on its own and i have a pretty big storage still got the sliding shelf and like I said, it's not gigantic like last generation. But with my knuckles down, I'm elbow deep. So there's still lots of room. Can I fit a Michael Kors bag in here or a giant bag of Burger King? No. But I can put a decent amount of stuff. I'd say I can fit a pretty small handbag. Can't fit a small book bag in there. But you can fit a lot of things in there. And I have a simple 12 volt plug with a little dust cover. Hard to see with the lighting. And the shelf is even removable as well. That closed down like that. And this closes like that. No extra secret buttons for secret storage. Onto the shifter area, I have a couple buttons here. This will turn off the traction control and vehicle stability control. So if you want full power to the wheels, say the car's parked and you got two feet of snow and you just want full maximum power, you can press and hold that and it'll turn all that stuff off. EV mode, when you press that and the battery is charged above 75%, I just pressed it. That's actually going to keep the engine off. So when I push it, you'll see on the very top left, it says EV mode right over here. That means electric vehicle mode. Now that guy's going to stay on. It'll stay in EV mode until the battery goes down to a certain percentage, until you go to a certain speed, which is upwards of highway speeds, or until you reach a certain distance. That's going to depend on vehicle demands, though. So say you're cranking the heat, you got the heated seats on, you're driving up a steep hill, you're giving it a lot of throttle input. It might override this and kick the engine on 
the car is going to do most of the thinking but if you're doing easy parking lot low speed city driving that's when this button is really going to help you out when you hit trail mode it's going to say trail in green right by your little ev friend and if you look down by park when you hit trail it's going to show you some rocks that's just going to kind of change the all-wheel drive system to handle gravel rock and dirt and stuff like that a little bit easier reduce your wheel slip when i press this that's the parking brake hold i have to be buckled up when i push that i'm gonna get a green symbol here that says hold and the cool thing about that is when i put it into drive i'll get the gold one now check this out now that it's gold i can take my foot off the brake and i'm chilling at the red light then i can go forward a couple feet same with the drive through i can come to a stop and once i see the gold i can take my foot off the brake but i'm still in drive very cool so you don't have to keep putting it in park when you're at the the drive through then i come to a stop now in reverse it's not going to do that for me only in drive just remember when you're using that feature don't forget when you're done driving to put it in park but it's very nice especially for the hills here are the drive modes that i mentioned if i push it up when it goes to sport down one to normal down one again to eco so for sport it's going to light up red on the bottom and it's going to say sport mode when i push it down again it goes to normal mode when i push it down again it lights up blue and goes to eco mode you can do it while moving and it's going to change the overall drive and feel so sport mode is when you're going to get that power from mg1 and mg2 normal mode is going to be a blend between the two for normal driving but sport mode is going to be when you need the power eco mode is going to settle you down cool you off boost your gas economy you don't need a ton of power very nice for the reserve drivers onto here i have my cup holders with a cutaway insert so i can lay a phone down flat and a simple yet modern and sporty looking shifter i'm not a shifter person but some people are very big into shifters overhand grip just slides right down they're no longer doing that toyota weird seven shaped thing where you had to go over and click 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 people had an issue with that it was easy for me, but simple. It's smooth. Let's get that out of the way. Little knickknack storage here. Two USB C's that light up, and a USB. That's the one you use for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And a flip up door that covers your old school 12 volt cylinder for people that are still holding on to the old school add ons, heating blankets, chargers, whatever you're into. They still let you use it. Now for your charging wires. Instead of them getting snagged onto your shifter and all up in your drinks and you, you pull your phone out of the shelf and it pulls your drink out, there's actually a hole here underneath where you can take your wire, run it up through here, and this little guy pushes out and you can run the wire through, close that up, and the wire stays there. Very creative. You don't want to be that person that's just got a new Highlander and you go to the drive-thru and you get yourself a Diet Pepsi and it's wrapped around, you grab your phone and it spills all over that nice new graphite leather interior. Or soft text to be exact. Also compared to the last generation, there's a big separation between the passenger and driver shelf with higher barriers so you can really hit the turns and your stuff's not going to slide around everywhere. Yes, you did sacrifice a little bit of storage. But are you going to remember that and be bothered by it? Not at all. You're going to put your purse in here, your little hand purse, your phone, phone over here, chapstick, sunglasses, and they're not going to go flying out the window on the beautiful fall day when the windows are open and you're hitting the turns on 44.55 before you go pumpkin picking. So that's nice that they did that. Hazards are easy to see and get to like on all Toyotas. And for the climate control, it looks like there's a lot going on, but mainly you have your two different temperatures here and here. So I can unsync it or I can resync and it syncs to the driver, and I can control the whole car from the driver's side. I have my heated seat, three different levels, on each sides, and then I also have defrosting wipers. So there's an element in the glass that heats the wipers, it's not a special wiper. Defrosting side mirrors, that's the little symbol here, with the defrosting rear glass, and the front defroster. Isn't it awesome how they put all the defrosting stuff right next to each other instead of making you look like you're riding in a Boeing. It's right here. Boom, boom, boom when it's snowing out. Boom, 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 boom. Done. Everything is defrosting for you automatically. So great that they did that. Your synchronization is this lever here. Fan speed is right here. So notice everything is right by its button. 
simple stuff. Air direction. And then I got the rear. So when I turn the rear on, I can change the rear temperature here. And then what I can do is I can tap rear climate. Now you see this little bar that comes over? That means I'm in the rear. So now I can change the rear's fan speed and rear air direction. Of course, they can change it in the back as well. Right back here. So you can see what they're doing. So say you're not in the rear. Say you're in the front. But you're wondering what they're set to. Or they say, Mommy, Daddy, I need it changed. You can just hit this. You can see where they're at. And you can turn it down if they need. Then you can resync it here. Then you can go back to the front like that. And now I can change what we got up here. Super simple. I also have a power button here for the rear climate. So say I don't need the rear on, I can turn it off like that or turn it back on. And then I have a front driver prioritize button, which is just going to favor the front climate. So it's going to cut the rear out immediately. Really cool. So it kind of bypasses this. So that's an overview of the climate control. We're going to skip the screen and work our way up. And then we're going to finish up with the screen. So up top, when we look up, what do we got? We have an auto dimming, almost rimless rear view mirror. Nice and wide, very easy to see. They didn't waste a lot of space on a bezel or a rim. You have garage syncing to three different garages and power on and off. A little bit smaller of a sunglass holder but it still works. You can put it lenses in. And if you go halfway up and release, you have what I call the school bus mirror. So you can see your passengers a little easier there. Then that closes up. I also have my light settings here so I can set the lights to go on with the door. Let me just light these up a little for you. There we go. I can set it so the interior lights come on when the door opens or they don't, or I can turn them all on now. Of course, I can power the lights individually here. Unlike the Corolla, so Toyota, if you ever find my video, please, on the Corollas, make the lights here light up. Because people in the dark are constantly trying to find this button, and they can't because you didn't put a light in there. But with the Highlander, you got them. Then I have the sunroof, so if I press and hold and release, opens right up. And fun fact about Toyota sunroofs, once it's open, there's a little more left. Then I press and hold to close. And then, of course, I have the up and down, which is not automatic. And then I have my shade. All new Toyotas come with one year of safety connect. So if you push that once, you can talk to somebody and they'll help you out. If you push it again, it sends a help me signal. If the airbags go off, they'll send help to your location. Of course, you have to give them permission to track your location. And then this little light here is great. That's a heavenly little light that shines down ever so lightly so you're not distracted, just so you can see a little bit of what you have over here so you're not searching and getting distracted looking for your stuff. Onto the visors. That's my speaker for the Bluetooth commands, by the way, and the safety connect. I have a flip up door with the light outside over here, not like on some cars in my truck over here. And this comes out like that. And you see these two little arrows? So instead of there being a plastic piece, you can just slide it. Simple. Easy and made to last. And you get that on both sides with a handle here for the passenger and you got a handle here for the driver. Now let's finish up with the most important part, the screen. So for the screen, just like all Toyota screens, besides the Priuses, you have a simple screen you have two turn dials here, and you have, well, on Camrys and Avalons, the dials are actually over here, but then you have these four hard buttons. The screen does pop up a little bit, doesn't fold into the dash, it stays where it is, but if you're sitting in the right position, it's just in line with the dash. All right, hacks about the screen. Say you go to menu, and I'm like, oh wait, where am I again? I just got the car, I don't know. I know because it says menu. See how it says audio when I'm in audio? When I hit map, it's gonna prompt me for the navigation app, but you don't need a navigation app because if you have a smartphone, you can use the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto by plugging it in, and you can use Waze, Google Maps, Apple Maps, etc. 
Home screen is where you'll spend most of your time if you like to be efficient with your space because you can see different information all at once. When you're connected on Bluetooth with your phone, it'll have four little slots where you can save your favorite people that you call all the time. And then they're one little tap away from a phone call. That way you don't have to hit the phone button and find them and then call them or worry about even touching your phone. To change the way the screen looks, you go into menu and you go to setup. This is where you can change a bunch of stuff. But before we go there, I wanna show you something really nice. When you go to menu, you can hit display and then you can hit screen off and you can still listen to music with the screen off, which is really nice because you don't have that bright light shining in your face. Yes, you can adjust the brightness, but it's great to have the screen off at nighttime and just, you know, you turn this down a little bit with the brightness button here, turn those down a notch and you wanna go easy on the eyes because when you're not shooting bright light in your face, you'd be surprised how better you can see. That's just me. You can change the volume and it still won't put the screen on, but you can hit any button on the sides and the screen will come right back on. Back to menu. And it's not gonna be a full screen tutorial, but I have screen tutorial videos on the channel. Check them out. In setup, this is where you're gonna change your clock. You can change the language and you can customize the home screen like I mentioned. So you can change the layout. Check that out. So you can pick your favorite layout. You can even change what is where. So say I wanted to put the phone up top, I can hit this one and hit phone. It makes more sense to me to have the phone one on the left because it's less space you have to travel reaching for it. You know, for audio, I don't know, not as important as phone. I feel like if I need to speak to somebody quick, boom, it's right there. But everybody's priorities are different. I make calls when I drive long distances. So back to menu, setup, I can change the color theme. Now when I go back to menu, even the shapes change. Isn't that cool? I find the black and blue easier on the eyes, so I'm gonna change that. They don't give you a ton of color choices, but it's pretty cool. Now if I go down, here's some more advanced settings. I don't really recommend you touching any of that stuff. You can check for software updates, but it'll usually notify you. Here's some Bluetooth audio phone and voice settings. For voice settings, this is where you can do your trained voice recognition for it to train to learn your voice. So you don't have to speak as much like a robot when you command it. Fun fact, when you push the voice command button, wait for it to beep. So you're going to push it and then it's going to go dink and then talk. What a lot of people do is they push it, they start talking, and then it goes dink while they're talking and it doesn't understand what they're saying because it started halfway through. So just a little pro tip. So for audio, I have all my sources here. The new Toyotas are coming with Sirius standard for 90 days, which is great. And then you can pay for a subscription later on if you want. I didn't realize how serious Sirius was until I, I did last year's sales records and saw how many of my customers required it. And it's it's interesting. It's good stuff. I don't sell Sirius, so I'm not going to talk it up, but it's fun. And then this will light up when you plug in an MP3 player, which is cool that they still give you the option. You can even reorder these buttons, etc. When you hit apps, it's going to prompt you for the app, the app update to use your Entune system. Let me know what you think about Entune. Basically, it gives you a couple apps that most of them you can use through your smartphone connection with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's a controversial thing. I'll say it. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm not a fan of Entune. Some people think it's cool, but let me know down below what you think of Entune. But you have to update this when you're going to do your connected services because one of the apps you're going to use when you have connected services is your remote connect and they email you a code which you're going to have to enter here. So, and then once you're connected to the phone, that'll bring you to the phone menu and then here's your, your tracks here and then you can scroll the radio if you're an FM or AM radio. And I'll just show you this real quick. If you have Entune Audio Plus or Premium Audio, you will have the remote connect for one year from the app, or you can start it from the key fob for three years with Entune Audio Plus or 10 years with Premium Audio. And this one has the Audio Plus. So for three years from the key fob, I can start it from here. But for the first year for free, I can authorize my remote connect once, and then for a year for free unlimited miles, I can start it from the smartphone by using the Toyota app, which is awesome. And then it's eight bucks a month, I believe, or 80 per year. Now, if you're watching this in 2022 or 2023 or 2024, 2025, etc., that may change, I don't know, but it's 2021 right now in October, and that's what the rate is, at least up here in New York. If you're not gonna use the app, 
for Audio Plus for three years, unlimited miles. One, two, three, and you just hold. It'll start blinking. The, the truck will start blinking, and it starts right up. If you have Audio Premium for 10 years, lock, 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 and hold. Hold, hold, hold. Blinkers start blinking. You release. Starts right up with a 10-minute timer. Awesome. I know what you're thinking. Why are you going to make me pay for an auto starter? Nothing I can do about it, guys. Everybody's doing it. I know that's not a good excuse, but who keeps a car more than 10 years anymore anyway? I'm going to keep my Tacoma for a long time. So there you go. That's basics on the screen. Hope that helps. A little bit about the design. Things are a little more streamlined, but modern looking. They have a lot of straight shapes that get smaller and then bigger. Kind of futuristic in a way. I don't know. First thing I noticed in the Highlander was this armrest, how this is a little bit higher up here instead of down here. I don't find myself having to move my arm back to operate the windows. It, it, it's very natural. I like it. The Forerunner's up here, which is interesting, but this is in a good spot. I do find when I close the door, I have to reach back a little more to get it instead of having a handle, but it's okay. And then for glove box space, for my glove box people, when you take all the books out, it's decent. You get a little light, which is cool. I wish the Tacoma came with a light, but you can't have everything in life, can you? I don't know. Locking floor mat for the floor, only on the driver's side. It's a quarter turn. I'm trying to get you some light here. It's a quarter turn, turn it, it releases. And there's another lock over here underneath. Make sure you lock these back into the floor so that you don't have that slide under your brake pedal and prevent you from braking. But I'm sure this is going to be a nice in-depth long video and that's that. So let's wrap up the video. So there it is. The 2022 Highlander XLE Hybrid all-wheel drive with the roof racks. Let's see those lights. I hope the video helped somebody. Let me know if the video was useful. I'd also like to hear if you have a Highlander, exactly what kind you have. And I'm a color guy. Tell me what color you got. I love the Toyota colors. Toyota gets a lot of compliments on the colors. And let me know what videos you would like to see. I appreciate all the support as always. May you have a safe, happy, healthy fall. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.